They both have swagger, they both have confidence, and they are both impeccably dressed. But which one of these alpha males, Daniel Craig's James Bond or Killian Murphy's Thomas Shelby, has the best walking style? The way we stride speaks volumes about our personality. It can draw people towards us or repel them away. It also has a profound effect on the health of our spine and other joints. In other words, your suave and debonair gait isn't going to do you much good if you're hobbling around with plantar fasciitis on one foot and a bunion on the other. For this head-to-head -head matchup, I'm going to be using my previous top 10 tips video pictured here to grade each of these gentlemen on their ambulatory prowess. If you haven't already seen it, I would definitely check it out after you watch this video all the way to the end and do all that wonderful YouTube stuff like smashing the like button, subscribing to the channel, and dropping me a comment to let me know what other content you would be interested in me bringing to the channel. Number one, let's see how James Bond and Thomas Shelby fare on the first tip, keeping the eyes forward, not gazing down. If you're always looking down at the ground, it means you're either leaning forward or have a forward head posture. Either way, this is going to misalign your spine at the level of your neck and or your lower back. Over time, this will lead to instability in the spine and chronic back or neck issues. Of course, you can glance down as needed when safety or common sense tells you so, but generally your neck should be vertically aligned and your eyes forward. We can see James with a perfect forward gaze, just as I described. Unfortunately, Thomas Shelby has a classic forward head position with his eyes gazing downward. The cigarette smoking isn't scoring him any extra credit either. So score one for James Bond and zero for Thomas Shelby. Number two, shoulders back and down. Proper shoulder posture is really important, not only for looking strong and confident, but also to prevent issues like rotator cuff tendinitis. Hunching of the shoulders should be avoided. Rolling the shoulders forward should also be avoided. Both Thomas Shelby and James Bond do a decent job with this. I don't see any hunching. You can tell the shoulders are situated properly because they are both walking with their palms facing the side of their thighs and their thumbs facing forward. One point for each of them. To contrast this, I'm going to show you this clip of Denzel Washington walking. He has a cool, relaxed stride, but he does have his shoulders rolled forward so you can see that his palms are facing back. That isn't good for shoulder health. Next up, relaxed arm swing. The arm should swing directly forward on the side opposite the swing leg and then drop back to a position roughly even with the body. That reflects proper core activation and rotation. We can see this arm swing here as James Bond walks, the arm traveling straight forward and then dropping back to the side. On the other hand, Thomas Shelby has an arm swing that goes out at an angle, indicating something different about what he's doing with his core that can negatively impact the alignment of your joints. When you walk, make sure your arms are going straight forward and back, not out to the side or across the body. They also shouldn't pull back behind the body, which indicates an overextension of the upper back. Next, vertical posture. Let's look at the posture of James Bond and Thomas Shelby as they walk. Are they completely vertical? As for Bond, we can see that he always maintains a vertical posture. Shelby, on the other hand, has a slight forward lean. It isn't always noticeable, but you can see it here very clearly. Once again, score one for James. Now, looking downward, feet facing forward. Normal gait with proper alignment should have the feet facing directly forward. This allows the weight to transfer evenly over the foot as the body moves forward. This helps to maintain a healthy arch that doesn't collapse or overpronate. The even weight distribution extends up through the knees and hip. Walking with the feet turned out forces the weight transfer over the inside of the foot, increasing stress on the arch. This can lead to plantar fasciitis and bunions. It also amplifies the stress on the inside portion of the knee joint and the hip, causing early wear and tear on those joints. Walking with the feet turned out is commonly referred to as walking with duck feet. This is very common, especially among men, and both James Bond and Thomas Shelby are no exception. They both display some degree of duck-footedness. In this clip from Spectre, we can see that the Blofeld character walking in front is very duck-footed. Bond, slightly behind and to the right, is moderately duck-footed. Sometimes he has one foot forward and one foot turned out to the side. Similarly, Thomas Shelby is moderately duck-footed. So, 
zero points across the board for walking with straight feet. Level the pelvis. Level the pelvis is our next comparison. We need to keep the pelvis in a neutral position, not tilted forward or back. Both Bond and Shelby appear to maintain a neutral pelvis when walking. A good example of a posterior pelvic tilt is the Carl character in Sling Blade, played by Billy Bob Thornton. You can see that the chest is slouched backward to counterbalance the pelvis, which is posteriorly rotated and pushed forward. This shot is an example of the opposite, the pelvis rotated forward or anterior pelvic tilt, counterbalanced by the upper back arching backward and resulting in the backward arm swing flinging back behind the body. Both James and Tom will score one point for the neutral pelvis. Now still looking at the feet, we're looking for a gentle heel contact. One of the most important components of a healthy walking style is a gentle heel placement. Heavy heel strike creates excessive stress on the feet, knees, hips, and back. One of the easiest ways to judge the heel strike is to see where the forward momentum of the leg swing ends. Placing the heel softly requires the swing to end its upward momentum just above the ground, only then placing with the heel. We can see this in the James Bond walk from the movie Spectre. The heel placement comes as the core rotates to bring it down in a controlled fashion. At the same time, the rear heel comes up. This is the terminal swing phase of gait. The Thomas Shelby walk does not pass through this momentary heel hover, the heel instead striking the ground at the point of peak momentum. Once again, I'm going to have to give James Bond a score of 1 and a score of 0 to Thomas Shelby. Now, proper footwear. Both Bond and Shelby are known for perennially being shod in dress shoes. According to the Platte River Foot and Ankle Surgeons website, quote, dress shoes are the worst shoes you can wear. Let's break this down. Men's dress shoes usually have little or no art support and pointed toes which can lead to bunion formation, end quote. They also point out that women's dress shoes have little or no art support and pointed toes, as well as high heels which transfer the weight unevenly towards the ball of the foot. While men's dress shoes don't have as high of a heel as women's, they still have a typical heel height of one to one and an eighth inch. This alters the gait as well as the weight distribution in a negative way. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to score both Bond and Shelby a zero on footwear. If you're the head of the Peaky Blinders or a double low assassin, long-term health concerns like bunions may not be top of mind, but my recommendation for you, don't put style over the health of your feet. The final of my top 10 tips was to walk for exercise. I'm not sure either character exercises in any standard sense, but I'm going to have to give this one to James Bond. Let's add up the score. James Bond gets a 7 out of 9. Thomas Shelby gets a paltry 2 out of 9. The moral of the story is the most masculine appearing walking styles aren't necessarily the healthiest, whether it's Daniel Craig's James Bond or Killian Murphy's Thomas Shelby. If you're trying to modify your walking style, be sure to do it with an eye towards better health for your joints, not style points. That's just my recommendation. I'm excited to announce my new Walking Code online course. This is the first new course release since 2015, building on the last eight years of providing free content on YouTube, during which time I've been listening to your needs and your comments to help craft the most informative way to help you walk more fluidly, walk with more confidence, and walk with lower impact on your joints. If you have chronic or repeated muscle, joint, or tendon issues that are not caused by a specific injury, then it may be that you're suffering from a functional problem. It may be as simple as incorrect posture or walking technique, increasing the stress on your joints and keeping your spine out of alignment. 
If you find yourself frequenting the chiropractor to get your spine back into alignment, or you're using a lot of acupuncture or massage to help reduce muscular pain, then this course is a must for you. Many people have also said that my instruction has helped them relearn to walk after an injury or a stroke or another medical issue. In the walking code, I help you consciously understand the patterns of core movement that will help you walk properly on level ground, walk up and down hills, walk up and down stairs, and perform many other different movements with proper alignment and fluidity. Just come to my website, which will be linked above and in the description section for more details. I hope to see you there.